hearer or a doer of the word and a hearer. Some of you may not realize that just hearing the word of God and not taking action upon it will cause you to not be fully blessed and you will miss out on all the amazing thing God has to offer you. I myself did not realize this until this last week during our mission trip. Josh Grimes introduced the BBC to us. It's basically an awesome way for us to memorize scripture and help with Bible studies and many other things. On Friday, we read James chapter 1, verses 21 through 25 really stuck out to me. <clears throat> These verses say, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Just listening to the word is not enough. We must go out fulfilling God's words. This mission trip helped me do so one way was spreading God's word. In Matthew 28, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. It's one way to grasp something and hear the word, but to heal another thing, spreading the word. Jesus wants us to tell everyone of his awesome doings. During the mission trip, we went door to door and invited people to a block party, to church, and just asked if we could pray with them. Of all people, I thought I would hate this the most because I'm really shy and I just hate out of them. But shockingly, it was my most favorite thing to do this past week. I love knowing that I was spreading the word. I got turned down multiple times for prayer, but either way, I know that I planted a seed um, to help them get closer to God. One man actually came to the door with his little son, and when I asked him if I could pray with him, he told me no and just shut the door on my face. Um, instead of just walking away, I stood on the porch still and prayed over the house. And inside, you could hear the little boy asking his daddy why he wouldn't say yes to prayer. This really touched my heart because that little boy was more accepting to God than a full grown man is. <clears throat> this is true for most people. Kids don't find it embarrassing to ask for prayer like adults do. Last week, we also painted houses and stayed in debt. After painting this lady's house, she actually let us pray for her when we knew she had been away from God for a while. It was amazing that just doing this work causes women to want to be close to God again. It was just amazing. It's your choice to be a hearer or a doer and a hearer, but always remember you must be a doer and a hearer to be blessed by the Lord. Psalms 31, 23 says, I love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord, Lord preserveth the faithful and the plentiful rewarded the proud doer. You must be a doer in here to get God's full reward. Just always remember, a hearer is like a man who looks in the mirror, and when he looks away, he forgets what he looks like. What is the point in just hearing the word and not taking action upon it? Just Nike it and just do it. How many of you have heard of the term riding the fence? Well, basically, it's being double-minded. James 1, 6 through 8, it says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is, is like a wave blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from God. Such a person who is double-minded is, un is unstable in all they do. What this is saying is that everything you do, you can't doubt, because when you doubt, that leaves an opening for the devil. And... One small opening and one small doubt can change your life and mind forever. 
I myself struggled with riding on the fence because I always thought it was the easiest way out. But as I grew closer to God, I realized it just made it harder to get back on the path with Him. Because I don't know about you guys, but when you sit on a fence for four years, and then you just like that try to uh, get back up and walk on the path, your legs forget how to function. Sometimes you have to take baby steps until you know where you want to go. Until you know where you want to go, but once you find where you want to go, it's a marathon with obstacles from there. But, but to be able to race in that marathon, you have to keep riding. You have to keep going. You can't keep riding on the fence. Because sooner or later, you're going to hit a fence post. With every fence post you hit, you draw farther and farther away from God, which means you'll miss all the amazing things He has for you. When you're on the fence and you want to be a full-on Christian, there's things you have to change. And when you don't change those things, that's what makes you double-minded. If you don't want to be double-minded, you have to change things, which could include changing the people you hang out with, changing the kind of music you listen to, and the biggest one, I think, is uh, following God's will, not your own. <coughs> God will never fully accept you until you fully accept Him. In Revelations 3, 15-16, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you, were, I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. People riding the fence are very wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. They need to choose one side or the other. It's up to you whether you choose to follow God or not. But riding the fence is just going to cause you no good. And if you don't get off the fence in time, it could end up sending you to perish. How's everybody doing today? Good. That's awesome. Well, like you said about the mission trip and everything, everything that's been going on. And thanks to Josh Grimes, Scott and Drew went along with them and the United Street, so. And so Scott told us just what's ever on our hearts. And stuff that's on my heart a lot is I like to say keeping it real, just not doing what everybody else does is do you and being judgmental about stuff. And so I'm going to talk about both of them just for, real quick. And the first one is just keeping it real. And I stuff from that comes from 1 Peter 4, 12 through 19. And basically what that says is, let me find it real quick. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the suffering of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief of any other kind of criminal or even as a member. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, for it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God, and if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. I really like that a lot, and basically talking about suffering for God, so if you do something and you get in trouble for it, you know, especially kids if you're here, because I like to do a lot of whining and complaining because you don't get your way. But when you do want to complain and everything, just go on with your life and just praise God that you actually care for me and stuff like that. And, well, like I said, like, like I like to call it keeping it real. Just don't be like anybody else, and obviously, I like illustrations, so I'm going to do an illustration. You notice, I normally don't dress like this, for people who see me a lot, I normally don't dress like this, I just wear whatever's comfortable. And keeping it real, just basically talking about yourself, so. Oh, oh you guys, I don't mind stripping, I have clothes on your feet, so. Just keeping it real, and not doing what everybody tells you. Don't, if your friends jump off a bridge, even if it's a bungee cord, well, depending on how out it is, I do. If I'm on a bungee cord, but if it's like off the Grand Canyon with no bungee cord or on a tightrope, there's no way I'm going to do it. 
Can you guys hear me like this? I mean, really, this is really hard. I love loving this. Okay. And so, I like to wear tank tops and stuff a lot, so there goes that. There goes my shoes, my socks. And guys might not like this, but I'm wearing shorts underneath, so. <laughs> Now I'm being real about this, and which brings me to my next point about being judgmental. Who here, well, who here has ever any judged anybody, judged for what they look like or how they do stuff? Okay, we got some people. I know I've done that a lot, especially with some of the kids at our school that wear like $200 Air Jordans and clothes like that. I don't actually think to myself, wow. Probably little people get everything their way, and I have to work my butt off just for one cent. This kind of makes me mad sometimes, but I'm not in any place to judge. And so, my text for that comes from 1 Peter 2 9 through 10, and that says, if I can find it, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of the darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Meaning, and the point I'm trying to make from this is not being judgmental. And the biggest point, I think, what really makes any of us different from anybody else who aren't Christians except for having Jesus in your life? Because, I mean, we, have, we don't live the same life, but we all live a life. We all go through the same struggles. So what really makes us different other than having God in our life? So that's all I have to talk about. <laughs>